All right. Today, September 24th, <coughs> Hopkinton Conservation Commission um, is holding our, our meeting here at the Senior Center. Um, Tommy, we have some documents for yes, signature. We do. Yep, from the last meeting, we had an order of conditions, and that's coming around. And we also um, had two requests for certificate of compliance applications. I was able to send you around Matt's comments earlier. Um, I think, um, there again, these were pretty straightforward. And right now, it was really anything we needed to. Yeah, nothing, yeah, nothing significant on either of these. Oh, I like that system. <laughs> Sometimes I forget it. <laughs> Leave it yeah, here. No, that's, yeah, that's, that works up there. And then we've got six new applications. Those would be geared up for the following meeting. Okay. And then we've also got a new interact that'll get listed at the next one and that'll be for the following meeting after that. Okay. All right. Um, and draft minutes for review. Everybody get a chance to look at those. All right. All right. <coughs> Can I get a motion to do um, I do have oh. one comment. There was yep. a question mark in them. I didn't know if that had since got filled in. Yeah, that was, uh, let me bring that up. Um, I was talking with them. Um, if it was supposed to say a question mark. <laughs> right, because uh, it, was, it was about the uh, language. Um, okay. Um, and we got, remember at the end of the meeting for yeah, 1665, we kept going back and forth for plantings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, we weren't sure if it was numbers that were, um, that we talked about, or um, it sounded like it was just, um, we just watched the video um, to earlier today, trying to get clarification on that. So I worked it in the order, just telling them they need to provide us with a, a planting plan, a revised planting plan, based on the discussion of the, of the hearing, because Craig was talking about it out there, but he wasn't on mic. So I don't know what he said. And you guys go, okay, that, that's good. So yeah. we were a little unsure what the what the um, what the exact um, number was. Okay. So this was the. I think that was my question last. This was the last meeting. I I was not present at this meeting. Oh, okay. So um, I'm not sure. We I mean, if we could maybe we want to table it, see what if yeah. Jeff remembers because right. I wasn't. Yeah here for that one. Sounds good. I'll just table okay. it and uh, send it back around again. All right. Um, we have Mahone, 20 Grove Street. You want to come on up? I do. Oh, is he here? Great. Yep. Excellent. Where to? Right up front. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> um, you want to just give us a little overview of what you're planning to do? Sure. Or trying to? Sure. Yep. So we have an old barn that's basically falling down. So we're trying to take it down, okay. uh, replace it with a new one. Um, it'll be The new one will be a little bigger, but it'll be closer up the hill, further away from the back of the property, which is where the wetlands are. Um, that's the nickel version. Um, okay. There's also a brick patio behind the existing barn. That's going to go away. That'll get replaced with grass, if that makes a difference. Um, okay. But that's the nickel version, right? Oh, it's, yep, yeah, there you go. Right up here. So basically, here are, here are the existing conditions. Yep. And this is the proposed condition. Yep. So taking out that barn, moving it further away from the resource areas, to the to the rear of the property, so there's the existing barn. Mm -hmm. So he's looking to bring it closer and into the the paved area of uh, of the driveway. Right. So a little of this area here 
will now become impervious. That I assume right in through there is lawn area now. Yep. yep. And the area, but the area behind the existing barn that's not marked on this picture, but the one you showed before. Yep. Um, that sheet, it all the area with the line through it, the diagonal lines. That's all brick right now, and that's going to go away. That'll become lawn mm -hmm. again. Yes. Okay. Um. Yeah, that looks pretty straightforward. It's all in disturbed area, and getting rid of the brick is a um, improvement on the impervious. So, yeah, you're gonna have less impervious. Less impervious, yeah. Taking the brick out. So, if the, if the commission wanted to entertain it as a minor project exemption, we could do it with a letter with this kind of standard construction uh, conditions. Mm -hmm. Or if you think uh, an RDA is applicable, okay. and let him know. I don't know. I think I'm, does anybody have any comments? I think a minor project exemption makes sense in this case. It looks like an overall yeah. improvement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that would be okay. okay. Um, yeah, let's do that. Great. So Don will write you up a letter okay. and send it to you, and it should be good. All right. Sounds good. Great. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in. No problem. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm in favor of all that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in favor of all that. Okay. Yeah, we said that. Oh. Man, you guys are prompt tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I am not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, do you want to have? Sure. Um, let's go to Hunt, 158 Hayden Row. Come on up. Hi. Hello. Hello. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> what do you have going Simpler on? request this time. Okay. <laughs> so I bought uh, 158 Hayden Row. Um, and in the rear of it, it has this commercial garage, basically. And I would like to take that down, leave its foundation, and just rebuild upon it. Basically, we can build a four-family house on its same foundation. The only addition that I would do to it is just an egress deck. But I would do the, uh, you know, have the pilings driven in rather than digging it out and cementing it and so on. But it's, you know, like where it is now, it would be mm -hmm. 61 feet, you know, out of the wetlands. And then basically, you know, everything would be done on the pavement and nothing around it would change. So you're just, so you're keeping the same footprint? Right, that, that foundation would stay the same and then, you know, I would just build a wooden house on top of it mm -hmm. as opposed to the steel building. Through the chair, um, there are some in the in the archives older um, applications as RDAs where they took down existing houses and put a new house on the existing foundation as they didn't knock the foundation down and, mm -hmm. and rebuild. And the, in those past ones, the commission said, "All right, because there's there's exemptions under the bylaw for replacing but not enlarging," so they they waived it under the bylaw, but because it was going to be a house, they, they, they had an RDA under the Act in the okay. past. Whereas that is, you know, it's, it's a RDA application, there's no filing fees, the state doesn't charge filing fees, and there's only a legal ad in the newspaper, there isn't a notification to a funding process uh, under uh, an RDA under the Act. Mm -hmm. Is the pavement, do you do anything with the pavement? It's, no, it stays. it's just going to stay the way it sits. Yep. There's no drainage that has some drainage work to redo or anything? No, they just, you know, the roof would stay the same and, you know, it has water and sewer and all the utilities currently. In the parking lot, though, in the paved area? Is there any oh, the paved. Uh, no, it would just stay the way it sits. Yep. And you said it would just be, um, it's just a wood deck? 
Yeah, it would just be a wooden, you know, deck mm -hmm. for e the second floor egress. Correct. Okay. I mean, it seems like it fits the description of what we've done in the past for just a building replacing. Yeah, it's just this one's unique where it's a garage. Right. The other ones were, were houses. But I mean, as far as the our concerns. Um, there's no, doesn't appear to be any changes. Square footage. No. It, yeah. Right. It's right. whether it's no, a house or garage. Except surface work or not. No excavation, yeah. Right. Yeah, throwing oh, the, the staging building will out. be on the blacktop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, throwing the building on the woods. Well, no. Right? <laughs> exactly. Your backyard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah I, think, I think that makes sense to yep. do the RDA yeah. under the under yeah. the act. And they won't need to file under the bylaw. No. So Makes sense, everybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Okay. All right. All right. Very good. You want that back? Thank you. Mm -hmm. We well. need one for the file. I've got. Do you keep it. Yeah, you got them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's 7.45, so um, move on to Petrosi, 0 Leonard Street. It's 7.44. Close enough, round enough. It's close enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, okay. tonight we're just going to be continuing the hearing. I don't know. Okay. I see that you're missing a few members, mm -hmm. so then it's probably beneficial in the long run that we continue without opening the hearing. Okay. If that's agreeable to the commission. But I would like to just uh, give the book. Yeah, I like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I brought the, I paid for it already. She said, I was No, I paid, I got to the town for one time. Oh, good. Yeah, Excellent. I knew you'd want proof, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me, it's Ruth. It's a big thing, $25, it, Ruth, Ruth, you know. Yeah, she put, she put paid, the pink sticky on it. I've only paid like, okay, five Ruth. times for it. You don't mess with the account. Yeah, so exactly. They, she I gave mean, me the matching notes, and I'm like, okay, yes. Um, so last night I was with the planning board, and uh, they voted a few things, not all of the things, but one of the uh, items that they are asking for is that this roadway be made 40 feet wide which would ultimately push everything back closer to the wetlands as opposed to what we would try to do is push them away from the wetlands so I don't know whether or not it's um, practical to ask the Commission to request the Planning Board to consider reconsider that particular uh, decision in light of the uh, wetlands that we're trying to avoid. So it seems like two boards are working against one another. Mm -hmm. So just just the thought. Um, and that's the only thing I wanted to discuss tonight with regard to the outstanding orders, uh, notice of intent. So it's strictly up to the commission on how they want to interface with the planning board, but um, it's certainly going to affect our proposal uh, going forward. What is the road currently at? So what right now, this is a private. This is a private way, Paper Street. It's it's a variable width um, a right of way. Varies from 33 feet to 28 feet in width. There's a proposed 20 foot uh, width pavement, and um, 
and they even are asking for berms to be uh, installed, which would require us to widen that to 22 feet to a foot on each side for a Cape Cod berm. So that would be another uh, ask f of the uh, planning board because we currently were just proposing it as a country drainage type of um, low impact design drainage type system. So when you add um, berms, you have to widen the pavement and you also have to redesign how the water is going to sheet flow into the swales that we've proposed. So um, a meeting again with them uh, on the 7th of uh, October. So any um, input that you could offer that might um, relieve or essentially get us to what we've proposed would be uh, helpful in the process. Um, and that's kind of all I can say about that. So we can discuss that. We'll continue this to the, when is your next meeting? So, Melissa, good question. Yeah, again on um, October 8th. Yeah. So I'd prefer to go two weeks beyond that because okay. if there's that would be there is the a redesign, yeah, if there is a redesign, then we're going to need to Time. submit yep. plans, you know, revise plans and get them to you. So it wouldn't be practical to meet the next night right. on that. So. Okay. Jim, did you have a comment? I had a question. What, did, what was planning board's um, reasoning, rationale, basis? Well, we're. Uh, we're dealing with uh, one of these gray areas, as we have been all the time. This is a unconstructed paper street. It's been in existence since 1946. And there's a certain procedure that you follow. Um, and the way the planning board is um, applying their subdivision rules and regulations to this way, obviously we can't comply with the today's regulations because the right, right of way isn't 33 feet or, or isn't 40 feet wide. So in our, our position is that they can only apply the regulations to the maximum extent practical based on what we have. They're making the presumption that because I own one side of the street the entire length that I have in my uh, discretion to make the roadway wider, the right of way wider which we disagree with and but again if we're trying so for example from here to here I have control of the width but from here to the street I don't so what would happen is you'd have like a, a 30 foot right of way here that would then fatten out to a 40 foot right of way and it's just it's not really uh, without getting into the legalities of it it'd be easier if they were just not um, make that a requirement. So, so on the they agreed with everything else that the width of the pavements only the traveled way is only going to be 20 feet instead of say 24 or 26 feet. They agreed to that and all the other things. It's just the curbing and the and we haven't even gotten to the sidewalks aspect of it too. Whether or not they're going to require a sidewalk. So. Uh, we've asked for waivers of all, all, you know, several other items, but we just <laughs> we only seem to be getting to through two or three of them each each meeting for some reason. So, uh, but that's the rationale, I guess, behind it. I don't don't know any. So this would you would look to the town to um, accept this as a public way. I, I've ultimately. never I've never proposed it as a public way and I never pro I've not proposed it as wanting to be accepted as a public way. We've always proposed it as a private way, homeowners association maintenance and no obligation of the town uh, and they know that. feature. Excuse me? They know that. And, and and I think I think they know it, but this has been going on a long time so you know maybe they've forgotten it. Uh, I don't know. But that's the way we've proposed it, and that's how we want to keep it. But, it, like I said, it just seems to be different. Uh, this board and, and the planning board have, like, conflicting objectives, it seems. 
So I think we just have competing interests. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. So um, it may help if if the commission were amenable to you know keeping it. The, I mean, you want to prefer us to move things closer or further away from the wetlands. So everything that and we're trying to do that. But then we go to another board, and they're pushing us back. So um, I don't know what the solution is going to be there, but any support that we can get relative to that would be helpful. And that's really kind of my update on that uh, particular issue. The only other uh, item for discussion is that you've uh, I've asked for a reconsideration or. Not quite sure what the process is, but I picked up on a butters list. Don has indicated to me that we just go forward and re-advertise for a new public hearing. Is that so? Is like it? yeah, through the through the through the chair. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys remember, like the last uh, whole one, we sort of followed the the bylaw. Um, this is uh, two eight one uh, C. Then twenty days following the uh, receipt of request for consideration. Commission will either issue a final decision incorporating the changes or vote to reopen the hearing. The commission's always taken the act of voting to reopen the hearing. Mm -hmm. Then, within 30 days of that, that vote, we typically go through the process of, of notifying about is, uh, you know, uh, that whole notification process. Whether, and me and Lou realize the way that it's worded, it says, the hearing shall be convened within 30 days of the request for reconsideration. He's already submitted that, so mm -hmm. really, I think what well, we've always, in, it, it's really 30 days within the vote, you know, so if you guys vote now, it would be within 30 days so we can get them on the agenda, get it all squared away. So that's typically the process we've always done in the past, even though we don't do a lot of these, you know. Okay. Well, I, th I think that makes sense. Can, can I get a motion to um, reopen the hearing for? Reconsideration. Uh, HCC 39. HCC 30. Oh, okay. Okay. For HCC. For reconsideration. For reconsideration. So this was the one where. Drainage. The drainage. We were. Yeah. The. The Leonard Street. The Leonard um, Street. Plugging the. Um, yep. Exactly. Drainage pipe. I'll make that motion. Okay. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. okay. Good. Right. So Thank now you. we'll go through the process. What, what about what are we talking about? If, uh, is there a fee, an application fee, or advertising no, fee? No, no, yeah, well, would, yeah, we have to run a legal admin. You've already done the fee for the abutters list. Yeah. Now <laughs> you notify the abutters. We run a legal ad in the newspaper and okay. pay for the legal I'll get the, ad. I got that to you we'll, in the next. We'll get days. you on um, the next round right. for the paper to be right. here. If you can give me copies of uh, of the, the notification information here. Right. I can send you the forms too. It's a special bylaw form. It's not the one with both. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. notifications with yeah. is affidavit of service, and, the, and that list you got today. Right. And then we'll get going. Fabulous. All right. Great. Right. So, that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Okay, we'll keep going then. Um, FBC Fox Hollow. And the, these, two, these two you're going to read. Uh, one has a number and one doesn't? I guess so. Yeah, for some reason DEP only managed to issue us one number. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So. The Hoppingham Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, September 24th, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. at the Hopkington Senior Center, 28 Mayhew Street, to hear all persons interested in a notice of intent filed by FTC Fox Hollow, LLC, Site work associated with the construction of a single family house. Location 1 Block Hollow Road, Assessor's Map, R21 Block 12, Lot 12. 
through the chair. Just uh, Eric, you gave me all these receipts, right? Uh, I believe so Dylan probably sent I put them into the uh, wreckage, okay. so this is basically what you ended up getting after. Those receipt. are the green cards, and we got so, everything great. back, yeah. All right, so I'm going to give you those. All right. So I'm going to give the um, your original receipts okay. and also the check for the one you withdrew. Perfect. All right. Sounds good. All Sounds right. So we are starting with one fox all the road, is that correct? Yes, yes. We're starting with one. On. Let me grab a plan here. And I'll bring up electronics too. Sure. Boy. All right, so I'll go off of the big plan there. Uh, to start with, so for the record, Eric Dias, Registered Professional Engineer, Strong Point Engineering <coughs> Solutions. Uh, with me tonight is Ben Stillwell. He is a project manager on this project for the Grossman Companies. Uh, just by way of introductions, um, Grossman Company has been involved in the project for some time um, as a lender on the project. And recently this year, we know the struggles that have been had out there. Grossman Company stuck in, took it over, and said, let's finish this thing up. So their primary task to start with has been to finish up the house that's at, on the construction at the end of the roadway, which is lot number eight. Um, secondly, it's to determine where we are on these lots and get these ready to go, which is why we're here tonight. And then from here, it's just to finally finish this project. Uh, and I think we're looking to put this thing to bed by hopefully springtime, or at least be ready for top coat uh, at that point. So without further ado, um, lot 12, is um, right kind of as you're coming into the project <coughs> over the crossing, the first lot that you come to right there on your left-hand side. Um, we are proposing, this up. so all of the work on this lock, what's that? No. Couldn't do it from that far away. So all of the work on this lot is proposed to come basically right along the 100-foot buffer zone. Um, as part of the definitive subdivision submittal, we had proposed at that time an impervious movable barrier to be placed along that 100-foot buffer zone, uh, specifically for the purposes of stopping eventual homeowners from getting deeper and deeper into the buffer. So on this lot, we're holding to what was basically represented at that time um, we have had to shift the septic system into the, rail, into the rear lot, and that does put the septic system within the 125-foot buffer zone um, of the vernal pool, which would be uh, jurisdictional under the bylaw. Um, the bylaw does allow for that if we can illustrate that there is no other option to place that uh, particular uh, component. And in this case, we've been back and forth through these lots quite a bit now um, with the Board of Health agent. The, one of the prior owners, I'll say two owners of this project ago, had disturbed those lots. Um, we've been through these with the Board of Health agent. It's his opinion that because that area of the site has been disturbed, he cannot determine what is original soils, what is not, so it's disqualified. So the only area that we literally, literally have left to place a septic system on this lot is in this buffer zone because that is the only portion of the lot that hasn't been disturbed at this point. Um, so we have designed a fully compliant system. Uh, we got some minor comments back from the Board of Health agent. Then nothing that impacts our proposed um, buffer zone disturbances or anything like that. So we just didn't want to make those changes in the 11th hour before we walked in here. It's only septic system component stuff. Um, so along with the notice of intent that we submitted, we did submit a button on your overall buffer zone analysis. And we had talked about this once before. And the, the takeaway from it is this. It does summarize things with all of the numbers and what have you. But in short, this is a copy of the notice of intent plan that was submitted for the roadway and infrastructure. Now we know that the order of conditions for that only applies to the roadway and infrastructure. But as a part of that plan, what we did was we took a look at this area that's highlighted in blue here. This is area that was within the buffer zone that was at the time a maintained field. And sort of partially as we'll call it preemptive mitigation for what we knew was to come on the lots, we said, okay, we're going to let this revegetate naturally. Um, so nobody has touched this area. This area is coming back to life. It's pretty well vegetated out there now and is doing what it's supposed to do. So if you look through the buffer zone analysis that we submitted with this, what you'll see is that the just sheer area-wise, this area far outweighs any of the proposed disturbances that we have within the buffer zones on, these, on both of these lots, actually. 
So that's the long and short of it. I'd be glad to take any questions or give you anything else you might need. Receive these today. They all look manageable, um, and we are happy to walk through any and all of them at your direction. Yeah, Matt, you want to go through if there's any um, significant comments um, that we want to talk about? Yeah, um, I guess the big question that's kind of outstanding for me is this note on, I guess, the original plan about the wetland replication area mm -hmm. to be constructed. This area down here. Yeah. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Don, I believe we had determined that since it was a part of this area that was being revegetated naturally, I believe we determined that that didn't necessarily need to happen as a part of this. What I recall is it was a type on the plan. It was always, it was always, um, it wasn't a wet and replication. Mm -hmm. It was the buffer zone restoration. It was restoration the buffer zone restoration. That was kind of the landscaped area. Right. And, and, and from the original NOI, it was going to, it was going to let, go wild so we were going to get a vegetated uh, buffer zone. Right, which is what it has done right. to date. And, I think it's just... And I don't know if you had a planting plan. I don't know if you were going to put any any um, like trees in the vernal pool buffer zone. I know the area mm -hmm. outside the vernal pool buffer zone was going to go wild. I can't remember. I'd have to take a look back at that original uh, right. at know, that So there original might be some plantings. Conditions. There might be some plantings happening here, yeah. But other than that, yeah. it, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a wetland replication. Right. It was... The other area that needs to get done yeah. is that exactly, mm -hmm. so that needs to get done. Yes, this area is definitely, that's a constructed storm water well with the ecological restoration area. That one definitely has plantings associated with it. Um, what we can do is we'll take a look back at this one, and if there are any plantings, those will be done um, before we close out the order conditions for the roadway and infrastructure. Um, yeah, I brought it up just, just for thinking about acts, because I wasn't sure what the status of it was as far as access, because if you build that house, you really kind of starting to paint yourself into a corner right, as far as getting there. down there. Yeah, and that's one of the other things I thought about too. One of the other things regarding access is this is pretty well vegetated. It might be worth, if we were supposed to plant some trees in there, we could end up doing more harm than good by the right. time we get right. machines through there. Mm -hmm. So it might be worth us taking a closer look at this before we get to work on these two houses. And if need be, maybe we modify the original order if we all agree that it may not be worth getting in there at this point. Just something to so think about. So where was the wetland mitigation for the wetland impacts associated with the road? Uh, it was in joined in with this, and it included this area through here where we're doing the, um, the replication while the constructed stormwater basin. Right, because it was in So the mitigation was allowed to go in with the stormwater? Yes. The stormwater yeah. basin? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, because the uh, the original crossing didn't meet the stream crossing standards. It was mm -hmm. a small pipe there. It's like a 12 inch pipe. Right, exactly. Yeah. So they were able to keep the roadway in the in the ex you know existing path there. Then they uh, improved the uh, wildlife connection. Basically, mm -hmm. uh, both sides of the wetlands were, were shown to, to show improvements with the installation of the, the, the new culvert, mm -hmm. so the commission took that into consideration. So it wasn't necessarily a lot of fill, it was more just replacing a culvert? It really was, yeah. 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 We, yeah. in the existing condition, there was a path, like a logging road that came right. back here, and there was just a 12-inch pipe under it. So obviously there was no migration pattern between it. So right. what we were able to do, we actually picked the whole thing up, yeah. made it meet the stream crossing standards, opened yeah. it up on both sides. Right. And the only fill that we ended up needing was, we weren't really filling in the wetland boundary, we were just filling over that um, logging road that oh, was okay. there. Right. All right, then that makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah. So one other comment, just because I, I did walk down there just to see if I could see if it looked like something had been planted or anything. Mm -hmm. I did notice there's still some old like farm fence down in there, and there might be this area down here. Yeah. Okay. And there might be some value if we're looking for sort of maybe minor improvements that are very mm -hmm. sort of low impact. Just going in there and cutting that fence out, um, yeah, just to, you know, it's it's nothing significant. It's not going to stop any small wildlife, but it wouldn't hurt just to get it out of there, kind of to potentially open up wildlife yeah. connections. We don't take any issue with that. We can get that out of there, sure. Um, let's see. Another comment was so on the grading uh, between the two house lots. Uh -huh. um, there's a there's a drainage outfall at to the top there that comes off the road. Right 
yeah. Yeah, and there's obviously it's shown the grading is shown as a swale until you're going to get down to the bottom there, and then sort of the the grading kind of changes to all of a sudden the swale goes away. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't know if it's, that swale should continue so that. We can certainly let that swale continue. I, part of what we were trying to do was, um, you know, if we're going to bring that swale, we got to do a little bit more work down here within the buffer zone, so we were trying to keep it out of there. In fact, if you do go back to the definitive plans, it is shown kind of right at that line as making that break so we don't have to get in there. Mm -hmm. um, if the commission would prefer us to continue that swale, by all means, we can do that. The other thing we can do is when we hit this slope, we can add to the slope some, let's say, like a riprap uh, so float that, that diffuser. Was, yeah, that was sort of my out. concern was that you've, you've, you've sort of channelized the flow above it, and then all of a sudden you're hitting it where the channel ends. Right. And what's that water going to do? Yeah, yeah. Sure. you're going to end up with yeah. scour. Sure. So I, I think either way, just some protection that you're not going to end up with scour, I guess, is my concern. Sure. I, I think my preference to mitigate disturbance in the buffer would go to, with a flow diffuser there, mm -hmm. um, and we can add that to the plan, certainly, as a condition or however you want us to do it. Yeah, I mean, you could do it as – because if, if you're thinking it's tied back to the to the roadway, it is. you could do it as a project change under the roadway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know where you want to place it. I don't know if you want to put it in. This I would probably line. do it that way. Yeah. All yeah. right. Great. Yeah. That way, everything under the roadway is completely separate, and when we do it, do sign-offs, we're not tying it all together somehow. Yeah. yeah. Um, my next comment was, you do have details for the rooftop <coughs> infiltration. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any calcs as far as the sizing of that. Uh, we can add those. Uh, those were sort of a calc that I think when we originally designed this, if you refer back to the subdivision. The subdivision plan there was sort of a generic calc for every house in one detail for every house that was supposed to carry through um, this house is actually a little bit smaller than what was shown on the definitives so if anything I think we shrink it but by all means I'm fine keeping it that way and just showing the calcs that proves it works yeah I mean it's simple yeah. calc just I think it's easy we'll add it to the plan yeah. um, and then my last one was the erosion controls talk about hay as opposed to straw and prefer to use straw. Sure. To avoid weed seeds. Yep. Fine with straw. That was it. Okay. Um. All right. Does anyone on the board have any questions or thoughts, any, especially in the uh, system? Well, I have a question, but it's not regarding the septic system okay. or this lot. It's regarding the roadway and the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Where are we with completing that and, and uh, coming in for uh, the final sign-offs? Right. So the plan at this point, in order for us to advance very far with the roadway and infrastructure, we have to get kind of situated on these houses because a lot of the roadway infrastructure involves the swales that go between them. Part of the grading that needs to happen on the lots has to include that. Uh, so our plan at this point is hopefully to get going on getting foundations in the ground on these before the season ends so we can work on stick construction over the winter. And then come first of the spring, we come back, we final grade these lots, we install that uh, constructed stormwater wetland, and we pull out of there. Um, hopefully before the growing season hits at that point, so that way we can plant them all and start the monitoring process. That's an answer. That is the current plan. I think having been involved in this project for so long, Grossman companies, you know, having been from lender to now developer, they've got an interest in pulling out of here. They obviously want to do it right, but they want to wrap this thing up. Um, so I have no reason to believe that they're going to drag their feet on this. Just to reiterate what Eric said, you know, when we, uh, we, we officially became the owner of this property in March of this year, um, when we did that, our focus was twofold. The first was to finish the framed house on Lot 8 because it was an eyesore, to say the least. Uh, the second was to wrap our arms around the remaining lots and what exactly we were able to build. Um, you know, I'm hoping we get through that tonight, and once we get through that, we can shift our focus to that, because, uh, as I understand, the uh, the town is holding a surety bond for this work, and, you know, like Eric said, we, w we would like to wrap this up as soon as possible, get that work done, have the surety bond released so that's that's where we intend to shift our focus once we get through the approval process on the lots do you know um, how much the bond is by the way? I, I don't know off the top of my head does no. anybody know that heavy through the planning board I, yeah. it was substantial I don't remember off the top of my head but we're talking well into the six figures 
um, 200 sticks in my head. But somewhere I, I in that range, yeah. That with any, yes. It's high, yeah, it's up there. Hmm. Okay. We're talking about a thousand foot roadway, sidewalks, plantings, it's, yeah, it's significant. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Anything else? So I was just, you know, I am a little concerned about the septic. That was the first thing of like why I wasn't in the front yard. Um, the explanation sounds reasonable. And the fact that this was so no, disturbed, it seems like, well, the Board of Health. Yeah, no, I know. I, I don't agree with the way that the soil, you know, the soil thing, but I do trust our Board of Health. Um, and this place has been previously disturbed, so I'm kind of apt to it, but I'm, I would like to make sure that the Board of Health, um, like their findings are on our record. Yeah, yeah sure. I, I get verbals from, I went over and talked to Brian Besso. Yeah, I. He said they tested every square inch of this lot and the other lot, yeah. but if you want, I can ask. Well, um, yeah, actually we just like, ref I don't know how they file, just so we have a reference of it so that if somebody comes back and looks at this record, they can yeah. kind of go between the two because that's a big reason why right. the design is and you've got soil testing i've got soil logs with soil logs with the board of that health. ryan had witnessed and i have a whole litany of soil logs that failed mm -hmm. uh and they were all the stuff in the front because believe me when i tell you my preference was to have it here just for constructability purposes i wanted them in the front yard it was a little bit of an easier build um but we just kind of struck out um so yeah, I can certainly provide the soil logs and I'm sure Brian will kind of give the nod on those. Um, the other thing I think, like I mentioned, I, I have been in contact with Brian about just some some minor revisions he wants to the plans and they're just things related specifically to the septic. Um, no problem getting through those. I just didn't, I wanted to limit the number of revisions to the plans that we had. So I figured I'd hear your comments first and do it all at once. He's got a couple on the plan already. You got. I don't know if it's, I see his notes here. Yeah. You know, it talks about Phil, that was the problem. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. I don't know if they correspond on the plan. Do you have the uh, Those location? two are shown, and they're right here in the septic area. Okay. But yeah. we did pepper this whole front area with more test pits, and it, it was, we had a hard time discerning exactly what was native and what wasn't, because I think what happened was when the prior owners actually owned this, they came through this and they stripped off the top and subsoil. And then they started filling. So when you get out there now and you start digging, typically when there's fill, you have a very, very solid line of where the organics were buried and you know where the original grade was. That line isn't as prominent as it really should be. Um, you see it in some holes and not others because I just think what they did was inconsistent. So I think he aired on the side of, well, I'm not 100% certain it should go there, so it's not going there, which from his stance, I can't say he's necessarily wrong. And it's not, it's not clear whether these are off-site, this is off-site material brought in or if it's just reworked. This is all native, native material that was on the site, yeah. This was a, It's just been reworked, otherwise it's still... It's just been reworked, that's right. So any fill came from there? Any fill came from here, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. If anything, material was brought out of this site, nothing was ever brought in. So I don't know why the septic can't be wood in the front, but then again, I'm not the board of health agent. Probably for good reason. <laughs> they might put the septic take in the front. Soils, soils <laughs> course for no, I've had plenty of soils courses and septic courses. So. Um, if I can ask a question, just so I understand some some of the history. So the road, the road. Mm -hmm. And some of the lots were approved before, just one in three wasn't? Yeah, so what happened was the original order of, the original order conditions on this project was for the roadway and infrastructure only. And then each lot individually we had to come back for, um, for an individual NOI mm -hmm. on that lot. As the bylaw required. As the right. bylaw required. We just haven't, they never got to they lots one They never got to three. lot one. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yep. All right. You just wanted to understand. So I'm pretty sure, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah this lot here. Yeah. That yeah. one. In yeah, three. This one, yep. And then five, right? So five's done. That, is that five? five is done, and we're actually on as a work session item for five tonight. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, we've got or, the commission's ordered three. I mean, issued three orders for a lot. The other lots are outside our jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. These are the last two remaining lots in the commission's jurisdiction. You're not going to see any more filings. Mm -hmm. right. Only RCOCs from here on out. <laughs> okay. Um. 
So with this much information that we're looking to update on the plans and whatnot, I think you done. look at the supplemental information on, on the testing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you know we can ask for that uh, to be submitted. And I think everything else has been. Is there anything else we were asking? You? <coughs> everything else is just. Um, oh, the calcs. It, it the calcs. Is the the calcs, calcs uh, Matt's comments. Right. Um, and, and I'll touch up Brian's at the, the same time. Whatever is going oh, to yeah. go at the bottom but, of the swale. But he's probably right, going to yeah. do that as a diffuser, uh, as Part a project road. change under the roadway okay. order conditions. And I can even show it here, but I'll still go just yeah. to be consistent exactly. throughout everything. Yeah. That and the plantings, mm -hmm. whatever we're I wouldn't want. Do I wouldn't want that to get lost road. in the single family house. I wouldn't either. You know what I mean? Yeah. It should be with the road. Sure. All so right. for this particular lot, we're looking for the soils, logs, information from Board of Health and the roof calc. Yes. Mm -hmm. Added to the plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't issue the order until we get that. Until you get right. that. If no. you guys take a vote to right. issue, it would be subject to, is this the one that needs a, it needs a DEP file number too? Yeah. So it needs a file number and it needs the discussed information. Mm -hmm. Then if that's all satisfactory, we'd be able to issue an order of conditions. Mm -hmm. if Mission yeah. okay. And we can, on our end, we can turn that all around very quickly. Um, it's just a matter of when DEP is going to get us a number. Okay. Did you, had you originally submitted it to DEP? Yeah. yeah with one the of them got a number. What's that? With the filing fees? Yeah. They, in fact, well, we one got one of them got the number and one of them didn't. Yeah. I know. I was wondering if it was because when I read them, it looked like one had all the Wells Protection Act filing fees and one didn't. And I was wondering if that was what. As soon as DEP doesn't see the money, they're like, well, I'll put this in the... Yeah, they line. usually do, yeah. But I, um, my recollection is that they received everything. Wasn't that one the bylaw? That might be the bylaw one. Yeah. We then you gave me the fees. Then I gave you the fees, and we sent them the fees as well. Okay. So we're just a couple of days behind. Right. I expect that they'll be issuing a number within a couple of days here. Because I think when we had originally filed for this lot, we filed only under the bylaw. Right. Right. And then Don took a look at it and said, well, you got this small area over here. You should file under the act as well. Or move that. Or move it, which I couldn't <laughs> move it. So we amended our filing and then sent the fees back to DEP. So I think that's probably why they're a few days behind on this one. Okay. I think I'm okay with um, voting on this one pending receipt of um, the requested information and... Don's review of that. Okay. That's on. Yep. I probably should. Is there anyone in the audience that um, has any comments on this project? Okay. Um, can I get a motion to approve? Um, close and approve that. Close and approve hearing. the hearing pending the roof calcs added to the plans and providing the soil I'll data and the DEP number. Sure. All in favor? There's another one we got to read. You can just let me get caught up here. You guys didn't get any certificate of appliances yet, did you? Uh, we do, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. On, <laughs> at least three, two, of the two on Pond Street or whatever. The two on Pond Street oh, yes. and the first one as you come in on the right hand side. Those are all complete. All right. Uh, the Hopkinton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, September 24th, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. at the Hopkinton Senior Center, 28 Mayhew Street, to hear all persons interested in a notice of intent filed by FBC Fox Hollow, LLC, for site work associated with the construction of a single-family house. Location 3, Fox Hollow Road, Assessor's Map 20, R21, Block 12, Lot 11. Excellent. Uh, for the record, again, just to be official, Eric Dias, registered professional engineer with Strong Point Engineering Solutions, and with me is Ben Stillwell from the Grossman Companies. Uh, this is what we refer to as Lot 11. The address is 3 Fox Hollow. Uh, the one we just talked about is right here, so this is just on the opposite side of the swale. 
Uh, very, very similar lot layout to the last one. Uh, we still have the house in the front and we still have the septic in the back with the slope going down to it and for all the same reasons um, like we talked about before when we were out there to do perks on lot 12 we did a whole bunch of perks on lot 11 with the same result so the difference in this one is that a portion of the septic system on this lot is located within the 100 foot buffer so the entirety of the soil absorption system is in the 125 vernal pool and then a portion of it is within the 100 foot uh, BBW buffer. Now on the last lot where we have that immovable, perme Im immovable permeable barrier, there you go, that line just continues in a straight line. Um, and that is what was shown and represented on the subdivision plan. It is in the exact same location so that hasn't changed. Really it's just that because of the shape of the wetland the buffer zone pushes further into the lot at that point. So again just like we talked about previously when we took out kind of the hatched the colored in area um, of the approved NOI plan for the subdivision. This area again was so quote unquote preemptively mitigated for. We did anticipate this disturbance and knew that it was coming. Um, so again, really very much the same thing. The septic system is located where it is for the same reasons we talked about. We would prefer to move it up, but obviously we can't do that. Um, so that's where we are. Uh, also, we did receive comments from your review agent today. I won't speak for him, but I think they're very much the same as what was um, what was discussed before. Um, because this one is, is in the hundred, I think there was some talk in the comments about the commission could consider or should consider whether or not this is a self-imposed hardship um, because of the fill on the lot. Now, I would argue self-imposed in the sense that it was disturbed during the course of the project, sure. I think it'd be more accurate to say that it was imposed on the current applicant by some work that probably shouldn't have been, been done the way it was by the prior owners. Um, so again, they are simply in a position where they're trying to finish this project. Um, I think we all have an interest in seeing that happen. That's it. Okay. So I would agree uh, with Eric that his reflection on my comments are, are what they are. Um, I guess just one question that maybe could have applied to the last one as well, and pardon my uh, ignorance on this, but, and I'm sure you wouldn't want to do it from a cost perspective, but could you not just like dig out, sort of over excavate that whole area where you would like the system to be and just bring in the right type of soil? You can't because what Title V says is that it has to be four feet of undisturbed naturally occurring material. So part of the, I won't say the argument, but the debate that we've had with the Board of Health is whether or not the material that's there now was disturbed or not. Is that what has always been there? Meaning did the prior applicant disturb all the way down to bedrock and then start filling? Or did they leave four feet and then start filling? And I don't think the Board of Health is comfortable to make that determination. But this area, when we dug these test pits, we did see, in fact, you'll see this test pit here, no sign of fill. We got down the virgin ground because we're in an area where that hasn't been disturbed. And then this one, you'll see we have a very clear buried A layer. So we get down to about three feet worth of that fill material. And then we see a very defining line of organics and grass and roots that say that that is the existing grade. Um, so we're comf we are confident and the Board of Health has agreed that that's the right place to cite these because of Title V regulation. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. There's your question. So, this particular one, I just don't like why isn't it that way further? The house this way further? No, the septic. The septic system? It's pretty much centered right in the middle of the lot. Yeah, but if the soils are better over here, but and it's further away from the resource area over there, why isn't it over there? You know, we could shift it a few feet. I think at the end of the day, we're talking about maybe 10 feet at the most. Uh, we do have setbacks that we have to maintain between the systems on the other lot and the side yard. Um, typically, the requirement is just that we site the septic system over the test pits and being in the field and taking our best guess at where property lines are, that's just right where the test pits are at center. If we wanted to kick it over a couple of feet, we'd probably make that happen. Because I mean, isn't it, um, am I, yeah, because I couldn't see the yellow. Because that, because the 
resource area kind of bumps out on the what's our right. On the right hand side. So you're saying shift it over toward the left property line a little bit more to try to get it further and further outside of that 100 foot buffer zone. Yes, and because I mean the test pits are showing that that's where the more native soil is, so it should probably theoretically work better too. Don't necessarily take issue with it. And that's yeah, something I think. In that corner, but. Yeah, I would push that grading over just a, a, a touch, uh, which we wouldn't want to go too far with it because that would then encroach on lot ten, uh, and we wouldn't want to exasperate possible grading there but that's something that we can certainly take a look at I don't think it really impacts the septic design all that much um, so I'd be fine to take a look at that sure would the uh, health agent be agreeable with that uh, I think you would that is obviously something we'd have to run by the health agent um, he usually gives us a good amount of flexibility with that sort of thing so okay I don't know if it would be appropriate, but if the commission chose uh, to, to vote in favor of issuing an order, perhaps that's something that could be taken up um, with the health agent and provided as additional information, um, kind of a condition of approval or something, if, if that's one of the only outstanding items. You could do it subject to revised subject plan to as revised discussed. Plan. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else have any uh, comments, concerns? <laughs> um, anyone from the audience on this one? No? Yes? Whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, Tony's okay, Sam. I'm at 213 Bond Street. So we've been watching this project for four or five years. So I had a, a clarification question, first of all. The package that I received was for lots 12 and 11, 1 and 3. There is a reference in one of the materials to number five, which would be lot 10. Is mm -hmm. that under consideration or is it just for two that we receive? It is. Uh, that is under on the agenda as a work session item rather than a public hearing. Rather than a public hearing? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess my question, and I apologize for being late, is um, is there any way, I don't know if Eric is the engineer, <laughs> is there any way that we could accommodate what the developer wants to do without having to encroach any further on some of the protected properties. Um, and I'm not thinking of that from a construction perspective because the construction's a whole other group of folks. Um, but we've, we've certainly noticed since we've been there that the original intent of all of the land that was around there for conservation, for wildlife, for whatever, there's not much wildlife going on over there any longer. Um, and, and just and I don't know that this does much to affect the wildlife, but I guess we just sort of are appealing to you guys to say, I don't mean enough is enough. But if there were another way to not have to do anything to keep infringing, um, there's very little going on with wildlife over there. I suspect some of it. We literally had blasting and like a rock quarry running over there for a couple of years. And I'm sure that's sort of taking stuff away. So if there's any way that it could be done another way, mm -hmm. I think that would be great. I mean, if there's not, um, again, um, I'm more of, I'd like to see conservation be more considered than mm -hmm. construction. And I say that as a construction manager for high-rise buildings in Boston. So um, just to ask more consideration. If I may, through the chair. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're absolutely right. There's, there was a ton of blasting that went on in this site. Um, I can say pretty confidently that I think we're just about done with blasting at this point. Uh, we've got about three more houses left to build. The way that these are set up, foundations are all above the, uh, the, the level that we would need to blast. So I think that that's, that's a very good thing. Um, as far as the conservation area itself, if you recall, about 75% of the land associated with this project and you can see it up there, um, is deeded, I don't know if it's deeded to, but it's held at least in trust by the Sudbury Valley trustees. Um, that area has been untouched. In fact, we've been in contact with the Sudbury Valley trustees. They're very happy uh, with what's happened out there. And then the last three lots that we're talking about now, sort of on the, I guess we'll call that the left-hand side, right where Don's mouse is, those lots are the ones we're talking about, and those all have 100-foot buffer zone concerns on the rear of the lots. So we're only able to touch, let's say, the top 
two-thirds from the roadway down on those lots. Everything else is going to remain vegetated as it is today. Um, so short version is we're getting very much to the end of the disturbance on this project. Everything is contained to what you see now and our goal is to wrap this thing up and let it all get back to natural as fast as possible. All right. Um, so, yeah, I echo that. I think it's in everybody's best interest to get this wrapped up so it quiets down yeah, out there. And once the construction is over, hopefully some of the wildlife comes back and, mm -hmm. you know, you get those buffer areas growing in. Um, I think as far as our concerns and what we can do on the site like Carrie was asking about moving the septic out of you know as far mm -hmm. as we can from um, the buffer zone um, is the best we can do mm -hmm. um, at this point in the design um, of the project sure. um, so I guess I'll ask for a a motion to approve the plan with the same conditions um, or requesting the same additional information for the roof calc added to the plan, the soil logs from the Board of Health, and a revised plan with the septic shifted as, as, far as possible. much as possible um, and approved by the Board of Health um, for review by Don and, and Lucas to yep. sign off on that. Um, so we'll be. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Great. We're good. I know you've got Lot 10 on for a work session. Do we want to yeah. table yeah. that to the end or do we want to take care of that real quick now? Yeah. I had a schedule, so. Yeah. And I can make that one quick. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let me bring that up. I can see all the rest. I brought that too. I brought that too. Good site plan. Yeah, dated July 26th. I think that's. Yep, that's the one. All right. So this is lot. Well, we call it lot 10. I guess the address is technically number five, uh, Fox Hollow Road. This is the one. So it was 12, 11. Now 10 is here. Um, this plan was actually approved by the commission about two years ago. The date on this plan is July 2017. Um, very little impacts to the buffer zone here. The only thing we really have is we filed under the order, excuse me, under the local, uh, just for this little corner of grading. Everything else was kept outside of the um, buffer zones. On this plan, the subdivision plan, that was approved didn't originally show the barrier, the immovable perme permanent barrier, extending through this lot, so we extended it uh, just as part of what we were doing here. We thought it made some sense. Um, short version of a long story, this lot design was always kind of trying to jam a square peg into a round hole outside of the stuff in the buffer zone. It really just doesn't work that great. Um, so we took to revising it, uh, so it's a little bit more friendly to the site and what it should be. Um, short version is our buffer zone disturbances actually got less. We, I think we were approved with something that looks like just over the order of a thousand square feet of buffer zone disturbance and we dropped that to 325 square feet. Um, septic system still outside of the buffer zones. We actually reperked these lots too. Did find an area, this one was a little bit easier because not as much of the lot had been disturbed. Did find an area very close to where we had originally uh, intended the septic system that was still natural and good to go. Um, 
and other than that it lays out very much the same as the last two lots that we took a look at where we've got roadway in the front a little bit higher uh, house in the front excuse me a little bit higher and then we're dropping off in the back as well so really we kind of knocked it down a little bit from what it was approved as part of the, oh, the other thing I should mention too two things one the order on this is in a prior applicant's name two is part of this request we did request an extension to the permit I believe that permit expires I want to say it's next year um, and since obviously no work has been done we've requested to just extend that permit it would be in equal term as if it was an issue tonight basically yeah, so basically, typically, they need to get the request in writing at least 30 days. They've got a request in writing, so, and then we would typically, as we get up to the nearing of the, you know, when it expires, uh -huh. then the commission can say, well, how much time, you know, how much, time talk, you yeah, sure. how much time is left, yeah. you know, do you need a year, two, or three, you know, you yeah. might even sneak it in under. Yeah, or, based you know, on what we're talking about for timeline, I can't imagine why we would necessarily need a standard three-year term on this uh, yeah, that's what I'd like to think that you know a year from now will be uh, Ben would like to think that a year from now <laughs> this lot will be a memory um, so yeah we can certainly talk about that when we get a little bit closer to the okay. extension can I see the, um, sure. the, the, uh, the one on the very next page The original had a pool in the backyard. It was an odd shape. The driveway's on the wrong side. So, do the chair. My only, you know, like, this just looked like it's going to be a really steep slope, and I was wondering how you're going to stabilize this. Being in the other plan, it looks more gradual and kind of more built into the sure thing this one looks like we're gonna flatten out the backyard and then sure sure it. so those are yeah. all all three of those have a two to one slope proposed in the backyard uh, and okay. that's to tighten up that slope and keep it away from having to encroach any further than we do um, it, the short answer is we're gonna jute mesh it we're gonna dig that slope we're gonna secure it with jute mesh we're gonna hydro seed it and get it sta vegetatively stabilized and we're gonna watch it Do you, need, do you need the other plan? No, no, it's fine. It just, it just looked really steep when I was looking at that one, the way it was. We do have um, similar slopes throughout this subdivision, uh, all two to one max, obviously not within jurisdictional areas. Oh, no, good. Um, but, and we've had good luck with them. Okay. Um, if they're stabilized appropriately, sometimes they take a little bit of watching to make it really take root and take hold, but we have uh, we haven't had any issues with washout or anything like that yet. I mean, now things are stable, we won't. Yeah, really sure. Question. So did you have to re-perk this lot too? We did, yes. Um, Even though there was our design that had been approved. Yeah, what it was is that I don't believe the septic permit had ever been issued um, and I think it was really because of let's say bookkeeping issues with the prior applicant that didn't really make things didn't make their way where they needed to so this system was actually originally proposed a little bit further up here um, when we went out there obviously that area had been slightly disturbed now so we had to so dig down here a little bit same story that changed since this yeah since the original plan the site changed All right. yeah the other thing we should note too is that we did go out there. We resurveyed this whole thing when we reparked it and everything. Make sure our grades are in line with what's out there today, so we don't have any surprises or anything like that. Okay. Cool. Do we need a vote? Uh, it's a project change. Chris, it's basically, change the process, commission deems it an insignificant project change. So sometimes you just do that or sometimes you take a vote um, I think typically you take a vote yeah let's go ahead and go ahead and vote it's, it's a whole new project essentially no there's an existing order conditions for this so yeah. this is a project change request well I know but it's a it's a completely different re 
configuration. Yeah, that's essentially. No pool and Disturbances yeah. are the same, but the layout and everything is is substantially right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's, yeah. Less, yeah. there's less disturbance. There's yeah. less disturbance in right. the commission's jurisdiction on mm -hmm. this yeah. one than than the approved yeah. one. So you're seeing a net decrease. Yeah, no, it, it looks like it's an improvement from the previous. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, can I get a motion? Motion to deem it an uh, insignificant change. He said. <laughs> Second. Does somebody make the motion? My motion. <laughs> All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you all for your time. I appreciate it. So we'll get this turned around and right back. I like the way we change the makes the motion every time. Keep Anna on our feet. Uh, it was Janine and Jim? No, no. It was Ted and, and Jim. Ted. Jim and Ted. First. So oh. Jim and Ted. You would think at one point we would just consistently have the same person make the motion second, but we yeah. haven't figured that out. Now that we're on TV, I tend to make a little minute. We're just going on. We're just going on. We're just going on. We're just going on. Thank you guys. Appreciate your help. We're just going on. I can think of reasons why not. I <laughs> <laughs> can make the motion for a second. Depends. There we go. Good night. Thanks. Thank Good you. Good night. What's TCF stand for? Is it liaison yeah, report? And I don't know which month. There's one of the most. We're so early for the solar. I don't know if anybody on there. Right, but that's why we have to take the one just laying with your bottle. Yeah, okay. I just need more somebody because that one will probably be. I think they're in the audience. They're probably ready to go. Okay. Um, Borrego Solar, Zero Wood Street. Come on, I'm telling you. I know. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Good evening. Brandon Smith, Borrego. Solar. Tom Bullo got her to talk. Hello. Do you have some changes? Yeah, so some slight changes to the plan. Uh, it's generally similar to what I presented a couple weeks ago, but since then we have kind of officially submitted the plans. Um, really not much changed as far as from that presentation. So generally the concept um, of, you know, no more tree clearing within um, any of the wetland or infernal pool buffers. Through the chair, I, I was just taking yes. in attendance just to advise you uh, the, there's only three members who have uh, attended all the other previous hearings, so you basically move forward at your own risk. With the rest of you, guys. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so generally, as I mentioned, pulled out of the riverfront area for the majority of the site. Um, the only area where we are still impacting riverfront areas in this northern section, which are also the array is still proposed within the 100-foot buffer, but this is currently uh, previously disturbed, so there's some greenhouses, hoop house areas that we're pro proposing to basically re replace. Um, with the solar array and to offset some of that impact this this kind of hatched area we're proposing a soil restoration area um, basically uh, decompacting and reseeding and adding some topsoil to that to that area um, to offset some of this this jurisdictional area impact um, I um, all right, we have a comment letter from Lucas. Um, you want to go ahead and link? yes. So it's uh, it's fairly lengthy again. Um, so what this comment letter includes is all our original comments, uh, Borrego's responses, and then sort of our update on those responses, whether we feel there's no further discussion needed or if there's further discussion. Um, I did go back out to the site and walked the entire wetland boundary that had been essentially reflagged from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, 
unfortunately where the first flagging was I felt overly conservative I think we do have some areas now that I think are overly aggressive so uh, we're not quite there yet on the wetland boundaries um, so it probably makes sense maybe Tom for you and I just to meet out there oh uh, yeah it probably uh, won't be me just because I'm getting married on Saturday so congratulations Tom Tom first another one just kidding bring your bride along she'd love yeah. it oh, yeah. <laughs> the weather's going to be beautiful um, but yeah so I'll uh, have Scott reach out to you to yeah that. Um, wait he's not going to your wedding <laughs> you met him? Bad career. <laughs> um, so wetland boundaries still need a little bit of tweaking, and then the other potentially larger issue is um, what's being shown as the limit of riverfront area. Um, so I think the applicant is currently using sort of an aerial version of where Whitehall Brook is, and just taking it directly from the bank of Whitehall Brook. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, I think based on my inspections of the site that you know riverfront area is measured from mean annual high water not necessarily the, the bank of the river um, and I think the mean annual high water out here is probably closer to the, the tree line that's shown out there because it's, it's one of these very flat streams with kind of a broad floodplain um, and oftentimes we'll see that the change in vegetation is sort of one of the indications you can use for mean annual high water so I think that might be again where the first iteration of this plan showed what they were calling top of bank in the upland for some reason now we're kind of pushed too far out in my opinion so I think the sort of a middle ground and quite a few of the comments related to not working in riverfront area anymore or exactly what was going on so until those lines all kind of get hashed out we can't necessarily fully vet out some of the, the issues um, so I think that's really the, the big thing is to get that fixed up, get that revised on the plan. Um, the applicant can go through some of these comments potentially, and I don't know if you want to wait to address those until we've done all that and you can look at it again or how, how you want to do it. But that's sort of the, the big thing I think that kind of has to get taken care of. A lot of the other comments I think are fairly minor and can probably be addressed. Um, other than I, I think there was a comment in the in the supplemental information that said there were no panels in the hundred foot buffer zone anymore, but that didn't seem to be the case on the plan. So I don't know if you want to speak yeah, to that, that tonight. Well, there obviously are still panels proposed to be in the one hundred foot, so that may have been a typo. Okay. I, it, we, there, I think probably what that was referring to was in this area. So there's no, there's no longer any fencing or panels within the 100 foot buffer that would require tree clearing um, so I guess that's okay yeah and I just don't know if the Commission to wanna, wants to speak to that tonight about because that seemed like with some of these other projects that we've seen that's been a big issue mm -hmm. as to regardless of what the buffer zone was yeah. before whether or not you guys were gonna allow that and I think that's tree clear no yeah. panels actually in the buffer zone. Oh, like structures sure. in the buffer zone. Right. We're no. We are not proposing any tree clearing within any buffers. I just want to uh, make sure that's clear. Okay. We've eliminated that completely. Yeah, and, and, and the only caveat that I'll put to that, just for the commission's consideration, and I know this isn't your, it sort of isn't isn't your issue, was that all the hoop houses and everything that were built in there, as far as we know, were never built with any permits. So, mm -hmm. in theory, that may have been forested at some point and cleared without a permit um, so it kind of grazed things up a little bit yeah. and if I may through the chair just respond to that mm -hmm. we did review so on the we, we submitted a performance analysis for the bordering land subject to flooding we reviewed aerials at least back to 95 there's no vegetation no trees um, there were no hoop houses at that time so what we're proposing is basically is to remove the material that was placed there when the hoop houses were constructed to kind of set it back to what at, what we can at best describe as native you know, based on the nine, 1995 conditions um, and then from there make ensure that no additional um, volume of material is placed in that bordering land subject to flood yeah and i think from the from the floodplain perspective um i was pretty much on board with that analysis and everything. I think that 
seemed like a, a fairly good approach. I guess one question that occurred to me after I'd done this was, is that giant pile of sort of loam and compost and nice soil there that looks like that was likely placed in floodplain? Have you considered potentially using that for the site to restore some more floodplain? Yes, we're, we're considering that we'll, we would need to vet it, make sure the material is suitable. But, right. but yeah, I think that would be our first choice. So I, th I guess one request I would have, just because we have been going back and forth, and obviously I can't really nail down a design until we, we know what these are. Um, any, I guess, conceptually, it, any issues that the commission would have with our, with our plan, I'd like, if possible, to know so that when we revise this, because I'm going to have to revise the layout based on these new wetland lines. Um, and I can inc incorporate potential changes if, if the commission requires. But I, I feel that we have adjusted, um, based on your feedback at our initial meeting, I feel like we've met those. But I would like to um, make sure we incorporate those in the next layout change. So you indicated up there at the top there are panels within the 100. Yeah, so currently this is... I'm having is trouble reading what all those different markings yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> kind of confusing. So basically, uh, this, so the, this red outline is, a is panel the fence. Field. Is, yeah, okay. so that's within this yellow is the 100-foot buffer. So it does encroach on that buffer, yeah. um, but there's no tree clearing. This is basically an open kind right. of gravel area. Uh, that we're that we're going to be pulling that gravel out and reseeding. I think that's one area. I can't remember what we did on the solar field on Main Street. Marathon? Yeah, over by. Right. Yeah. Um, I think there was an allowance of panels in disturbed. Yeah, yeah. Right. it was before me too. I don't know. Right. Yeah. I feel like oh. it has a lot to do with how long it's been since it's been disturbed. Right. You know, it seems like if it's been disturbed, it's seriously maintained. And I don't know this one that we've allowed it, but where it's you know previously disturbed but kind of allowed to go wild for a while. Right. And we want to stay wild. Yeah. And it was and it was a split vote. I think there was some panels in the in the buffer zone. Some of the Members were amenable to that. Some were because it was previously disturbed. But mm -hmm. how long? You know, there was mentioned that it was still getting maintained. I think some of the members had concerns that it had really gone wild. It was more meadow than you know actively disturbed. You know, usually that active disturb is it's active. You know, if it's longer than five years, then it's the commission typically thinks it's gone wild. You know? Yeah. If I may. Th this area here is right now it is actively maintained in this gravel area post construction basically outside the fence will be a lot will reseed and allowed to grow with you know no maintenance um, within the fence will be mowed a few times a year but it will be a substantial uh, substantially better th than the current conditions I guess the chair I mean these this seems reasonable. I haven't looked in much detail. Seems reasonable. It seems consistent what we want, especially taking everything on the buffer. Um, I'm more curious about the impacts of the river front, and specifically because we've had different filings and cases and stuff upstream, downstream. Because um, yes, it's previously a disturbed area, so that part of it um, seems okay. And it looks like from your last one that there's a lot of improvements. About I want to make sure that we have that down correct because mm -hmm. I think it, it could have different issues, different development along that same um, water body. So that'll, obviously, that will depend on where this river front moves, but our kind of the intent is to 
is to make sure that you know this area that we restore outside of this fence at least uh, kind of kind of uh, offsets the riverfront impact at a one to one ratio. Um, how that will look after the potential change to the riverfront, we'll, you know, I'll have to, to figure that out. But that's that's our intent. Yeah, and I think that's I did a, a comment in the recent memo of. I think the commission needs to consider is if we're talking about mitigation of whether it's riverfront area or BLSF or buffer zone restoration in some way, is it restoration if it's underneath panels? You know, if it's it's if it's at being actively used in some form other than just true ecological restoration, put it back and walk away, mm -hmm. is that? Should that be counted the same way as something that's, you know, if they were just to restore it and not put panels? Mm -hmm. right. I think that's just. I don't know if that's a discussion you want to have tonight because I think that does have the potential to sort of affect your layout as far as if if you want to if you're trying to figure out what your mitigation is, and you can't have panels on top of that what you're calling mitigation, then that's probably an important piece. Yeah, I don't think we've allowed mitigation under panels before. Yeah. Yeah, I think if it's part of the proposal and the development, then that would not, it would be like double counting it. Right. Um, I, was say, I mean, I think when we've had it where they've allowed more wild in and around the area, we've kind of, I think, been more flexible with some of the design, but I don't think we've ever allowed it to count. Not even marathon, yeah. I mean, uh, any of the, uh, the blueberries? Uh, improvements were outside the panel areas, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. that you know, there was uh, areas where there was uh, buffer zone. It was taking out a lot of the, the invasives, and then in the in the wetlands, it was trying to make it a, a, a wetland shrub habitat. So there's going to be a lot of um, shrub plantings. So and I. I Brandon, I think I sent you guys a, a copy of like all the information for that from that previous for, for that previous one. I'll do the same thing for the commission just so they can get caught up on on that old one because some of the members weren't even involved in that. So um, sort of similar previously disturbed area. So mm -hmm. they were aware of it uh, ahead of time when they were um, looking to file the NOI. I gave them some examples of what had what had transpired before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the only other comment I'll make on that too um, is it appears as though regardless of where that riverfront area line ends up is that the vast majority of the work will qualify as redevelopment under under the riverfront area performance standards. So the performance standard for work within redevelopment is you basically have to show an improvement of the riverfront area over what it is today. So it's not necessarily saying you know, so, so again, there's a huge gray area there. Is, uh, what's an improvement? Mm -hmm. You know, so you know, is the improvement of taking away the the hoop houses and the gravel and putting soil and planting it, but still having panels over it? Is that enough of an improvement, or is the improvement to take the gravel out, reseed it, naturalize it, but not have panels on it? So that's thinking ahead. That's I think I probably know what side of the argument you're going to be on, and it's, you know, and it's, and it's what you know. But that's I think kind of kind of come down to the crux of it. And I don't know, you know, where DEP had fairly substantial comments on this application. They may also be looking at that as well because they may not want to be setting precedent somewhere, um, you know. And they they tend to be a little prickly about room front area regs. Uh, uh, through chair. I think one of the reasons the DEP did have so many comments is because that initial layout had much more riverfront impact. But st still, I I did also want to clarify that kind of in the calculations, we were not counting kind of the buffer zone impacts as restoration necessarily, but it's more of this area that's uh, upland, so not within the buffers, not with the riverfront area, but still having soil restoration is kind of that's what within the floodplain though the, the majority of that. so it's still within a resource area yes right okay yeah uh, Melissa yes I have a comment so you I think I'm being consistent I have a problem I'm opposed to any commercial development intruding on the 100-foot buffer zone um, 
residential is another matter. But when it comes to commercial, any kind of commercial, I have a problem with that. So any panels that you propose in the 100 foot would be an issue for me. Through the chair, I guess yeah. my, my what we are looking to do with this is to kind of our end result would be an, an improvement to the resource area. So the lease for these projects are 20, 30 years after that. And again, there's no foundations, it's screwed augered foundations, so they pull out. So at the end of the day, kind of this area, it's going to be in a much better state ecologically, hydrologically than if we just remove, you know, just don't include this area and kind of leave it as is. So that's kind of oh, our... But our if you remove the thought. greenhouses but those just would leave it, then that's even better, right? Yes, but that's not we really have a, a bylaw concept. For a reason. Or that's not really a proposal. We have a bylaw for a reason. Um, when it comes to single-family residential, you know, you have to give a lot sometimes. Um, but when it comes to any commercial, uh, whether it's a building on South Street or this here, um, seems like we should stick to what our bylaw intent is. That's all. And I think I've been that way with all the other de commercial developments in town. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, in my opinion, I'd, I'm going to go back to and look at the uh, marathon project where a lot of, you know, the groundwork was laid for things like this with the solar panels specifically. Um, because we put a lot into uh, thought into that at the time. Um, so if you're looking for feedback, yeah, I would mean, definitely go back to that one. I'll leave you all that link so you guys get access to all the documents. So yeah. at the end of this meeting, I'll email that out to you. But that was before me. I'm, I'm on the fence with the 100. I, I've been a pretty big stickler with the other solar developments, this being already previously disturbed, but I still... I kind of side with Jim. We have the laws about the buffers for a reason. This is a little different. So anyway, just to be upfront, I'm on the fence right now. I'm a little leery of it, but this is different from the other projects we've seen. So. Looks like a bunch of ICDM silos. And you have panels proposed right now up to the 50. Is that you're outside of the 50 in that area? Yes. Or are you in the 50? Um, we do. We do have some small encroachment a couple i think a, a couple posts or screws would fall in the 50. Um, in this it's, current layout. it's still you you filed a variance request under the original plan further back because the setbacks are 75 foot for the panels yes 50 foot for the limit of work so you've still got panels inside the 75 hence you still have a variance request correct yes and i think that's what the commission Members of the, uh, so okay, it's actually, that I would appreciate clarity on that. Um, I guess <coughs> what specifically? It, it's the the no structure specification <coughs> of the setback that is an issue, or absolutely nothing within the one hundred percent. I guess if if the commission could clarify that for me, I'd appreciate it. Through the chair, yeah. Just as a. Is it just looking back at others, not on this particular one? Anyone, anywhere where someone have applied to, to go into an undisturbed, hence a wooded area, and um, to um, put panels um, basically in that 75 to 100, because the, the, the limit of structure was 75. So they're like, yeah, we want to cut down trees, but we want to put panels up to the 75. This commission said, right. No, you know. The other one that there was disturbed area, they they, you know, where you weren't cutting down trees, and you were meeting the setbacks. That's that's what I. I East Main Street. Yeah, because I still think they, I, I still think they had a variance request for for marathon. I'd have to look at that. I think some panels went beyond the 75 foot limit of structure, and that's where the split came. Some of the members were okay. Some weren't with the variance request. Hence, you had a split vote on that one. But you've been consistent on any on any ones where you were cutting trees down to get into the 75. You guys weren't amenable to that. 
Yeah, and there was, I mean, my feeling on the on the East Main Street one was it was, you know, the applicant said that it was claimed it was previously disturbed, well, right. which it was over the course of history. Right. But it hadn't been previously, it hadn't been disturbed for years, right? It's been out of agriculture for 10, 15, 20 years, so it's not really, so I didn't consider that to be previously disturbed because it's now reestablished and stabilized. And, um, I realize it's a little bit different because there's stuff already there. Yeah, and they were arguing that they, they'd go in and like mow once a year, yeah. you know, and um, they were actively. <coughs> well, but they disturbed areas that they considered to be previously disturbed that I would consider to not be previously disturbed for right. the purposes of a project. Like exactly. That. Every every filing is unique. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. the takeaway is that you know this uh, you know the majority of the project, the improvements look like what we were looking for, staying out of the hundred foot buffer. Um, however. Perfect. You know that area in the back, even though no, it's, it's previously disturbed, or currently disturbed to an extent. Yeah. Um, the commission's gonna ha has mixed feelings, um, and so you know, there's a, there's a might wanna take a look at what you can do in that area um, to make it more marathon project. In the bylaw, the, the it's discretionary. The seventy-five to one hundred is discretionary. And then they, they look at it cumulatively. You know, do you have areas outside? Why do you have to go in? So every uh, the bylaw gives them great discretion on, on either approving, conditioning, or denying any project in the buffer zone. Through the chair? Yes. So it's a question. So the active gravel pit area that's sort of in the middle there, yeah. So is that going to remain active? Yes, that's yeah, that's remaining as is. Okay, so it's not like you would potentially have access to put panels in that area at this. Not point at this time. point, no. Okay. That's a borrow pit right now. Yeah. Is it really? Well, yeah, it's it's kind of a little of everything. There's all kinds of stuff in there. So on the J, we're talking about this area. Uh, yeah. Let me take the femur off. So we're talking this area. Yeah. Uh, is that? The is that what we were referencing? That yeah. larger area? Yeah. Is that what you were pointing to on that? On yeah, that? I think so. So on this plan, I don't know if you want to use the laser. Uh, we just have it. That was giving back to me. Yep. That's the part there. There we go. If you want to point right. out that area on the plan, or it's got a few. So this cuts in this way. It looks like. There's basically this area here and this area here. Those two areas are still uh, to remain as is. We actually did review placing panels in this area, but the terrain makes it really un unfeasible. This big novel ledge up there too, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you have any other questions, or I guess we'll yep. try and firm up the wetland yep. in the riverfront area? Mm. Yeah. Would would a member of I guess well w yeah we could set up a a time to establish mm -hmm. an agreement on the lines, and then I'll we can revise the layout, taking into consideration what we've talked about today in this northern area, and resubmit. Mm -hmm. A layout to the commission. Okay. So, what's your timing on a, a continuation date, which means uh, October 8th and October 22nd? I suspect October 22nd would be necessary mm -hmm. to meet yeah. and. What is your availability looking like for the next? Um, I doubt I could get out there next week, but okay. I should be able to get out there the following week. Okay. Um, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, October 22nd, right. please. Yeah. 
I work with your honeymoon. I know, that's yes, what I was thinking. Yeah. Because this is a great site to pitch a tent and have a nice camping. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> right it's right there. Out there. <laughs> it's very romantic. Maybe, maybe after the first frost of the mosquito yeah, season. Yeah, say, after mosquito season, maybe. Yeah. Maybe after mosquito season. I can get you a job. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Permanent uses are on this thing up front. I'm wondering what permanent uses are. And these guys, does anybody have permission to do whatever they're doing? Whatever they're doing. Whatever they're digging up. I appreciate it. Thank you. Congratulations. Wait. So when is all that stuff? I mean, if this is on the front. Is it just piles of. Yeah, rubble stone. Just as a. You know, that's in transit? Yeah, I, think they, I think they bring stuff. Yeah. I think they import yeah. stuff. Okay. Sort Someone's it and stuff. And Somebody's laid down there. They're bringing it in. Now, so. I didn't ask for any comments from the audience. I keep reading. Okay. Okay. Those are the property owners. Oh. Did anyone in the audience oh, hey. have any You're comments? <laughs> so what is so this is. Uh, material like um, you know, training, Brandon, before you go, it would be nice if, if uh, we just yeah, we forgot of, to ask the audience um, if they had any questions yeah. about the years ago. We had since it's moment. continued, we didn't close it. Yeah, and, definitely. You know, wondering if an actual grub, make uh, sure all the material is used up. So now it's just so it's all it's all in use of one way or another, yeah. right? So it's coming or going, surplus, and process. And what was all this over oh. here? Was that stone? So the house this is stuff. the. Yeah, that stuff. The, the greenhouse is right here. Right. Are those just like uh, uh, super sacks of something, or um, pallets of stone? And that. Oh, um, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's New View or yep. Hawkins Stone yep. Yard. And okay. It has the hoop houses, and they they you know have a lot of the bricks and stone and stuff. Oh, great. And then part of it, like McIntyre, um, runs a portion and hauls material in and processes it, too. All right, good. Thank you. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> great. Thanks. <laughs> Any so, questions from the audience for the mm -hmm. application? That was a bonus question. I'm sorry. Not, a, okay. not, on, that not on that one. Oh. Okay. Oh. Sorry. All right. Thank All you. Set. Great. Thanks. Have a good night. Yeah. Uh, historical questions for a hundred. Are you, are you interested in a particular matter on the agenda, sir? Uh, not totally. My name is Bob Draper. I'm from Huffington Sportsman's Association. And I'm not totally familiar with your working, but I noticed that there was a piece in here that related to the uh, 27 Lumber Street. That was part of your working session. Yes, that's one of the new applications. That is, uh, at the beginning of the meeting, uh, the commission noted that they had six new filings, and that they were going to be opened at the next at the next public hearing. Oh, and so uh, another meeting like this? Correct. Yep. Yep. So it's it's so they can get an idea of, of what's on their you know what's on their workload. What what what's going to be, you know, what are they going to be facing? So. Um, and anyone else who wants to be interested in staying abreast of what's what we would be on a future uh, future meeting. Okay. So anyone can see that the, these were the new applications filed within the past two weeks, mm -hmm. and that they're not on the active agenda. That hopefully at one of the future meetings they would be listed uh, as a public hearing to be opened. Oh. But if you want, we can send you <laughs> we can send you you know we can send you copies of all the information yeah, if you're interested in what's going on. You know, no, no, we definitely cool. like to. Do, we know that it was approved previously, and that right. this is a resubmission of it. The yeah, because their order of condition expired. Yeah, and yes. they hadn't finished the project. Correct. So Started. legally, they needed to they need a, a permit to to yeah, continue the project because they've increased parking spaces, which is now going to make runoff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but the but the important part I was hoping that the that the board might have a chance to consider in this is uh, are you familiar with the Valpy chemical spill and the underground chemical plume that's in that area that abuts and is on part of the, the DEP's uh, tracking and yeah, part of the South Street. Yeah. Association. 
right. mm -hmm. property. But our, our robbery's concern is we're a sole source water, so that if anything disturbs that groundwater and pushes that plume in our direction, then our well is contaminated. That's that was really my only point of, of doing this. I know that you had all approved this before, but I was just and, and we're not interested in attempting to stop it at all. I just was hoping that you all would would take that into consideration, be aware of it. This is an incredibly wet area in there. I know there are wetlands and then there are swamps. <laughs> we're, we're, we're literally in the in the swamp stage between our two pieces of of property there so anything that disturbs that obviously our concern is what happens to that chemical plume and where it goes so if you if you want to put any of that in writing we can make that part of the part of the record so when the public hearing gets open it would be it would become part of the record okay would i do that at the meeting or would i send it to you yeah, you, can, you, can, you can email me any of your comments and i could have it put into the electronic oh, record okay and fine. then it would be made part so when the uh public <coughs> hearing, when the public hearing gets opened it would be noted that we received comments from from abutters mm -hmm. so the commission would be made uh, aware of it so if you didn't want to come if you just wanted to put it in writing or if you want to come to the next public hearing mm -hmm. when the commission asks for information from the public then you'd be able to do it verbally as well. Okay. Whatever, whatever's yeah. you know. Okay, we, we convenient I, for you. I wasn't aware of that we didn't appear at the first um, conservation commission hearing. It was only at the planning planning board meeting. Yeah, you take those historical, the old right. ones right. you're talking about. The original one when it was right. done. Right. Well, there's a chance to have another bite at the apple. <laughs> <laughs> Like I say, I, would, I kind of chuckled when the gentleman was speaking about conservation. All of, it, as you know, you also approved a piece of property on Chamberwell. Of course, correct. Okay. Yeah, the commission looked at the whole thing cumulatively. And that whole thing just kind of pushes everything into our our area there. And you were talking about wildlife in there, man. It, it has been decimated. The, the animal paths have all changed. For example. Oh, say five or six years ago, there were 10, 10 deer who were harvested from, from the property. Last year, there were two. So that gives you an idea of what's happened in that whole area there. Yeah. Although we do have a very vicious fisher cat <laughs> to move on to anybody's property that we like to. Isn't he ever within range? I beg your pardon? Isn't the fish cat ever within range? Oh, he's very much within range. <laughs> I think November 3rd, you can trap fish or cats or something in Massachusetts. It's like for one, one day. day? One or two days. It's like a bizarre <laughs> thing. And coyote, too, or something like that. Wild animal. Thank you very much for your time. I'm thank sorry you. that I was out of sorts here with, with all of you, but thank you. That's okay. Thanks. I'd shoot the damn thing if I was out there. All right. <sighs> so, liaison report review proposed trail improvements on rear joseph road well that sounds like me i just wanted to uh yeah so i don't know if in the future we want to actually have uh liaison reports from certain committees but i wanted to just share that the trail coordination and management committee it's been some time had some discussion proposal from its chair to improve the trail that's currently on the parcel known as rear joseph road that abuts the hughes property there's a trail that a footpath that's there that made by whoever joseph road residents or whatever to get to the hughes property um, and trail coordination management committee was proposing thinking about improving that trail um, so i told them I'm a member of that committee that they have to get permission first of all to have a trail there and secondly a notice of intent to improve the trail that if they get permission for it. so just a heads up so it'd be two two things you, you, you're pointing out a the Commission is is the manager of this possible correct. correct so our care you'd be putting control. on your, your your town managers hat then also you've got resource areas so then it would be right. in regard to taking that hat off and putting on your regulatory authority hats. right Right, first question, it's, 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 it's like the question about the Boy Scout, so-called Boy Scout loop that came in, where we allowed them to go on. It's first to ask permission of the Conservation exactly. Commission, since it's in our care, custody, and control, whether to use that property. Right. And then separately, to improve, it's a whole other matter. Um, so it's something that will come up at some point. I'm surprised it hasn't yet. 
uh, but we'll just keep an eye out for it. And I may walk it from time to time, just make sure there's no big changes going on. Thank you. You're doing a great job. I don't know if I ever picked up on all that stuff. Well, as a matter of fact, how would you like to be the next liaison? No, you're doing so well. Um. <laughs> oh, no, I forgot. I think that was pretty good. Never mind. I'm going to stay on that committee forever. That's awesome. <laughs> What's the Oops. other one you're on? The uh, PCPC? You can do with that yeah. too. PCP. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not on that. CDC. Um, all right. Upper Charles. Disclosure so. of appearance of. He's rolling his eyes. He needs a mister. Flavor or There's influence. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh, For next time. Uh, no Luke's way. Environmental has presented uh, uh, some of these in the past in regards to working with. Bowler, I think they've actually had one in the past for a strong point. This one was filed for uh, the NOIs you just reviewed. Um, right, okay. A fox hall. Yeah. So basically, mm -hmm. it still stands that um, Lucas won't be working with strong point on anything in Okay. All right. And there were no other public forum requests um, at this time. That would be number nine on the agenda. Uh, all right. Is that like a new thing, this public forum stuff? That was a new That's verbiage, the, the new verbiage. Oh, we sort verbiage. of carried Sorry. over what the, um, it's kind of what the uh, board select board yeah. utilizes, so we thought it right. might be a little Open consistent. Form. Yeah, like a look, open forum. So the stuff that comes in after we post the agenda. Oh, okay. Uh, so. mm -hmm. Seeing no one in the audience, I guess we can probably just dispense think. with That's that. That's why, right, yeah. I'm not expecting any <laughs> public ones, and we didn't get anything written, you know. No. Is everybody good for October 8th, except for me? <laughs> I didn't see any problems. Okay. Let's mm. about the old golden spoon in the written barn too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. I think the uh, meeting is adjourned. Uh, yeah, you want to take a. Oh, I had a vote on that. No. <laughs> TV lights <laughs> uh, Make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 A